it is the stench that assails me from a distance as I approach Ward 6Y. Imagine rotten meat, old blood, human feces, and urine all mixed together, not in one pot, but in 30 pots. This surely must be what death smells like. I call it the smell of death. As I approach Ward 6Y, I halt and take in a deep breath. I rearrange my face and look controlled as if everything is normal. You see, Ward 6Y is home for women with advanced cervical cancer. I approach the door, and I dare not hold my nose in disgust or wrinkle my face. You see, these are women. They are human beings. I enter Ward 6Y, and what was smelling before becomes indescribably worse. I glance at the 30 or so women in this ward, over there is Wangui, next to her is Mura, and across the aisle is Achieng. They stink. I follow, I glance at them again closely, and I see the unfathomable pain of bodies ravaged by cancer. They follow me with the only thing that they can easily move on themselves. That is their eyes. They are wallowing in their stinking body fluids that continuously flow. Advanced cervical cancer is able to dig a hole backwards into the rectum where feces is stored and dig a hole forwards into the bladder where urine is, bring them all together and mix them with rotten cancer meat of the cervix and discharge them through the vagina. Those are the 30 pots. They are receiving palliative care to try and make their life a little bit more comfortable. They receive irradiation to try and reduce the size of their cancer and the amount of emission that comes out. Sometimes this helps, sometimes it doesn't. They pray for death that does not very quickly accommodate them. They are totally, totally addicted on pain relief medicine. As I attend to these women, I ask myself, could I have done more with the knowledge that I have? If only I had had the chance, I would have told them that they could prevent themselves from getting here. They had the time, they had the ability, and they had the power to stop themselves getting cancer of this cervix and getting to this stage. But in my country here, Kenya, over 50% of all cervical cancers are diagnosed at such an advanced stage that it is impossible to have meaningful cure. That's how Agoy and Mora added in Word 6Y. It saddens me that these women are really all going to die miserably from a cause that is almost completely preventable. And like other cancers, the cause and progression of cervical cancer is known. In 99.7% of all cervical cancers, the causative organism is persistent infection with human papilloma virus. Now this virus, known as HPV also, it is the commonest sexually transmitted infection globally. It is transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact, not necessarily by the penetration of the penis into the vagina. Hence, 
condoms do not fully protect against human papilloma virus. Even lesbians transmit human papilloma virus to each other. Now, this virus, there are about 150 of them known. Out of them, 16 are known to be high risk to causing all various kinds of cancers. By the time somebody is by age 50, 80 percent of all sexually transmitted, I mean all sexually active people, will have contracted the human papilloma virus. But fortunately, fortunately, the body is interesting. 80 percent of those infections will be transient because the body is able, with its own immunity, to kick them off. But there is a 20 percent that remains that causes havoc. That's the 20% we are talking about that will cause the new infections and also cause the various cancers. Now, this virus is really not a joke. It causes and is associated with penile cancer, anal cancer, oral cancer, throat cancer, valvo cancer, vaginal cancer, and the cervix, which is what I'm here to really talk about today. This cervix is the mouth of the womb that closed each one of us inside your mother's wombs for 10 months. And then when you are ready to come out, the cervix opened. And there you came crying. It's a lovely organ. But when it is attacked by human papilloma virus, all kinds of things can happen. It takes about 10 to 15 years for the persistent infection of human papilloma virus to change the cervix of a normal woman from normality through precancerous lesions all the way to cancer. But this is a bit accelerated in women who live with HIV. In those ones, it is faster and they need to be screened more frequently. All precancerous lesions of the cervix are totally, totally curable. Early stages of cancer are also completely curable. No woman need ever die from cervical cancer. And yet, and yet, every two minutes, somewhere in this world, a woman dies of cervical cancer. In my country here, every day, every day, nine women die of cervical cancer. Globally, about 570,000 women are diagnosed with cancer annually as new cases. Globally, again, about 311,000 women will die from cancer cervix. If we come to my country here, more closer home, in the year 2018, there were 5,250 5, women newly diagnosed with cancer cervix. Then in the same year, about 3,200 3, women actually in Kenya died of cervical cancer. All these deaths and all this pain for something that can actually be prevented. How? There is screening and there is more recently vaccination against human papilloma virus. There are various types of screening. There is the pap smear screening cytology, where material, some cells are harvested from the cervix, given to the laboratory, and the pathologist is able to inform whether these cells are normal, or whether they are precancerous, or whether they are actually cancer. And then the appropriate treatment is taken for the stage. The second way of uh, screening is material is harvested from the vagina, again sent to the laboratory, 
and typed for DNA of the 16 high-risk HPV. If any of those 16 types is found, then the lady is requested to go and do a pap smear to see if her cervix is changing into precancerous or cancer. If none is detected, then the lady is requested to do uh, another DNA typing in five years. The third way we have of uh, screening is by visual inspection with acetic acid and visual inspection with lugos iodine. This depends on the fact that the color uptake of normal cells and precancerous cells is totally, totally different. So if we paint the cervix with uh, acetic acid or lugos iodine, then the colors of the abnormal cells will show differently from the normal ones. If it's a small lesion, then it's possible to treat it there and then with what we call cryotherapy, which means freezing the, those cells to death. If it is a big lesion, then the lady is transferred for bigger, more complex treatment. This, our country, in every hospital level four, level five, level six, they are able to do via VIA, visual inspection with acetic acid and lugos iodine. So it is possible, and yet, and yet, women do not go for screening. Reasons that they don't want to expose themselves, that they don't want to be told they have cancer, that uh, they don't have time because screening is done when they are well anyway. But the more important reason is that some women do not really know that they need screening. The second way of protecting against cancer is by vaccination. Recently, the, there has been a vaccine. A vaccine is some infective material that is given to the body in a controlled manner, little amount, so that the body mounts a fight against that material and gets fighter cells and removes that small amount of material. Now, these fighter cells have memory so that the next time the actual infection comes, then a big fight is mounted and it's removed from the system. That's the only way to deal with viruses because the minute they enter the body system, they stay. So as of 2007, in the Western world, there has been a vaccine against human papillomavirus for young girls and more recently young, young boys before the uh, start on their sexual debut. This uh, vaccine has raised a few issues, a few concerns. Uh, many of them have had them in this country. It is said it causes death. It is said it causes infertility. It is said it makes our girls promiscuous. It has uh, uh, many things. Fortunately, Kenya is in the global village. This and other concerns were all raised in the Western world a while back. And in the year 2012, the World Health Organization and the Center for Diseases Control studied two million girls who had been given human papillomavirus vaccine. And by 2014, the conclusion of these two health bodies was that there is no evidence of enough of a health risk to either change the vaccine or withdraw it. And that vaccine is still being monitored to date by many, many other health bodies for its efficacy and its performance. Now, let me tell you some good stories. It's not all so bad. I'll tell you about Sob Siobua, who in 2015, just on a routine pap smear, was found to have HIV. SL, which means a precancerous lesion just before cancer. She was treated successfully, and today she's carrying her second child. Uh, reverse back to 2008, when Kajuju, again on a routine pap smear, was found to have actually not uh, a precancerous lesion, but cancer itself. Fortunately, it was early stages, and it was possible to cure her with major surgery. Today, she's alive and well and cancer-free. 
it is possible. Uh, the Western world has almost beaten the cancer cervix scourge by rigorous screening every time and commitment to it. Our country can actually do the same. Now, I want to say this. We may not and we cannot be able to protect ourselves against human papilloma virus. Because definitely, sex must and will go on. There's no question about that. But we can prevent ourselves from getting cervical cancer, and we can cure early cancer. All of us here, all of us have sisters, have cousins, have aunties, have female acquaintances. Tell them to get screened. It's the only way we shall remove this scourge. I have one question for you, and it is this. Are you going to be a statistic? A foul-smelling statistic that dies with absolutely no dignity? Or are you going to be screened? The choice is actually yours. You are not like Wagoi and Mora. I have told you. Now you know. Get yourself screened and get your young ones given HPV vaccine before their sexual debut.